Hey guys, today we're going to talk about wall jumping. It ain't such a complicated mechanic and it can greatly improve the gameplay of your game. Mega Man, Mario, all the way up to more recent games. This concept has been used in a lot of successful games that we've seen throughout the years. And today we are going to learn how to replicate it. Alright, so to have a wall jump we need two things. We need number one, a jump, therefore some kind of avatar driven by a player using their jump button. And number two, a wall. Wonderful, so let's just assume we've got both of those. Next step is to have the player jumping towards that wall and detect the impact point. This is usually done with some built-in physics function like on controller collider hit from Unity. And then using that impact point, we can then find the triangle mesh where the two colliders met. And then with that triangle mesh, we can get its world orientation. And finally, with that orientation, we can find the normal vector of that mesh. In case you're new to the concept of a normal vector, it is pretty much just a vector that is perpendicular to the mesh, on two axes. You can see it here visualized by this red line. So we managed to find the normal vector of that wall, but before we use it on our player, we should run it through a if condition to see if the slope of that wall is too big. We can determine the slope of that wall using the y component of the normal vector. And this is how, with some clever maths, we were able to identify a wall and get a normal vector out of it. Alright, so as always, let me present you what we have right now. So basically, we have a moving player right here, and I can also jump, but I can't move mid-air. So basically, I don't really have any inputs once I've started jumping. So if, if I start jumping while going left, and then I stop holding left, it still goes up until I actually touch the ground. And this is something you actually kind of required for the wall jump, else you're going to end up having... um. You know, just a wall jump and then you can move directly after and you can wall jump again and just, you can basically just stick to the wall. So, I like having this locking direction in place so I can actually use a wall jump for something else and just, um, just humping the wall, basically. So, if I just show you the code really quickly, it is a quite easy implementation of, um, a simple mover like that. It's pretty much based off the jump and gravity video. If you haven't watched it, you can, of course... Find the link somewhere in the theory, I think I put it like three times. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can tell I have a character controller, it sets it to my reference here called controller and then in, in the update I take the uh, input get axis horizontal and input get axis vertical. Now if my character is grounded I apply this very small gravity so it's a constant force pulling him down and um, if it presses on the A button on the joystick then it, it changes gravity for jump force, which makes him jump, basically. And else, if it's not grounded, then we just slowly reduce the vertical velocity by gravity over time, the delta time. And this is where I actually lock in my direction. So I totally override what I had here, and I just put it on the last move. Now, last move is set at the very last um, call here. And then over here, I ignore the uh, y component of the last move, in case it's the last move. Then I normalize my vector and I multiply by speed. So I'm only multiplying my x and my z for the speed. And then I set back my y to the vertical, vertical velocity. And then we do the move call, of course. And it gives what I just showed you like earlier. Now, if we follow the theory video, what we need right now is to find the impact point when we hit that wall. And to do that, there is some function out there that will help us out. And um, I've pointed out the uncontroller collider hit for Unity, so let's just let's just go ahead and implement it. I'll do a private void on controller collider hit. Now make sure that you have not spelled this wrong because it is something that Unity calls on its own, so it's gonna it's gonna be the same exact name. And also it takes in parameter a controller collider hit that we'll just call hit. And then what we do at this point is um, we're gonna go ahead and just do a debug.log, I mean debug.drawray, and we're gonna be looking at where exactly we hit. 
So we're going to draw a ray starting from the hit point. So the impact point. And the direction is going to be the normal we've talked about. And I'll just put this on color.red, like in the example. Oh, we can put a direction. Okay, so that's what I was looking for. We're going to put a, um, not a direction, sorry, a duration. And it's going to stay there for 1.25 seconds. Now we can actually have a look. And here you have it. So every single impact point is being showed with their normal. And if I, I go on the wall, as you can tell, we still get that here. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Of course, we can't really do a wall jump from the floor. That would not make any sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to start writing some if statement until we only get the one that matters. All right, so the first if statement I will put in here is we're going to check if we're grounded. Really simple check. So if um, controller is grounded, so is not grounded, I've put the exclamation mark right here. So if we are not grounded, then just go ahead and draw every single collision we have and they're normal. So let's give it a try, see if this is going to be enough. Now as you can tell, we do get one over here that is a little bit messed up. But if we go ahead and we slide on the wall, we do get a better result, but sometime, sometime we get this annoying ray coming from the ground and we would not want to do a wall jump from that because it just doesn't really make any sense and it would not really work. So let's go ahead and just try to fix that. We are going to go ahead and in here, I'll do a end statement or you can do another if if you wish, um, but I'll just do a end statement. So if we're not grounded, and the hit.normal.y is smaller than 0 0.1. Now remember, the hit.normal.y is uh, pretty much what determines if, well, that's your slope check. So if the wall is slightly bent on a side, then um, as long as your hit.normal.y is smaller than 0 0.1, we're going to still consider it as a wall. But just imagine it was hit the normal the 0 0.5 that mean your wall is at 45 degrees and at this point I guess it's not really good to do a um, wall jump from that because of course you're just gonna have to find your own slope that is acceptable and now if you have a look at this right now this, at this very moment this all sounds very acceptable to me so I think we can do a wall jump of every single ray you see on the screen at the moment now the next step we'll need to take is actually check if we're pressing on the button. So we don't just want our player to jump if we just collide with this. We need him to do another input. So it goes like this. And then he presses again. Something like that. So again, another if statement. We're going to say if input manager a button. Now if you're curious, the input manager is something I have uh, done in the past and it's inside of the game mechanic video, the first game mechanic video. So if you're interested in having that and actually using your buttons as input, your joystick button as input, you can go there and just watch this video. Now let's have a look at what this gives us. So I should only be able to see that ray as soon as I press my A button and all the conditions are met. And it does work. So every time you see a red ray coming out from this wall, that means I was able to wall jump. And now is the fun part. We actually have to code. Well, it's not really, we don't really have to code because everything is really just in there. Um, but we have to put in some calls in here. So since we're really just doing another jump, we're going to say vertical velocity is equal to jump force. This way we're just jumping again, right? And uh, the way we have it here with the log direction, where is it? Over here. All we really got to do in order to um, go in that direction is say move vector is equal to hit.normal. So we're changing our move to match the hit.normal. And then I'll just do times speed. You can have a, a different speed for that. So if you're wall jumping, you don't go as fast or something of the sort. And as you can tell, we just did this nice bouncing off the wall. And if we, if we actually try it out, just a little bit here on this side, we should actually be able to achieve the platform up there after a little while. And here we go, we're up here. 
and that's pretty much all we need for a wall jump. It's a fairly simple mechanic to be honest, and it does something really cool to your game. I don't know, I really like games that have wall jumps. They just feel uh, like you have so much more control for some reason. Alright guys, well that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you did, please give me a like, really appreciate that. If you'd like to support this show, then please just go ahead and check out the Patreon page. And other than that, please subscribe for more tutorial ideas, and I will see you guys in the next one.